Welcome to the first edition of CIS Speaks, sponsored by LPI, Liberty Paper, Inc. I am your host, Jack Jones. I am uh, the strategy lead for CIS 4607, uh, and I will be the host of these podcasts. This is Mark Kobinger, one of our coaches, and Alex Yurik, another one of our coaches. Tell me a little bit about yourself. My name is Alexander. <laughs> I thought we went over this a little bit. Uh, I am industrial tech teacher here at Becker High School. I've been the coach of this team since 2013, so I've seen the ups and downs of uh, 4607. Well, like you said, my name is Mark. I used to be the assistant principal at the high school, so I went from being Alexander's boss, and then I quit my job and became a teacher in the middle school, and then he hired me to be the assistant coach this year, so I'm kind of struggling with that. Went from being the boss to his employee, so little power structure shift there. That's yeah, just, yeah, it's kind of it. weird. A little, little bit of tension. Yeah, little. he likes it. I don't, but hey, it's part of it. Does he get back at you a little bit from all the times uh, you were came down on him? Well, I subtly. haven't pulled the jumper cables out yet. But. No, no, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what car. happens. Right? Okay. I expect to get yelled at once in a while this year. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. So, you want to tell me a little bit about how the team started? <laughs> Holy crap. Um, yeah, I was walking down the hall. And I just must have sucker written on top of my head because anytime someone comes to ask me something, I'm like, oh, this one's like a good idea. So Mr. Kobinger is like, hey, you want to start a robotics club? And he came and gave me the spiel. Uh, six weeks, you know, a little. there's some kids that we're not really working with in the school that we could service. Um, geez, sorry about the moose banging around yeah. in the back of the garage there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, we're sitting in the hallway talking with someone, yeah, let's, let's get the rundown. Now, mind you, I'm coaching junior high wrestling, which is like the cream of the crop, right? Like, that's my job that I wanted since I was a kid. I wanted to coach middle school wrestling. It's happening at the same time. It goes from November all the way through February. Yeah. So it seemed legit to me at the time, right? We'll start this robotics club. It's going to be fun. Um, it's going to only be six weeks, not a lot of work. We'll just build a robot, go down to the competition, and uh, yeah, just trust me. Was it any one thing what you thought it would be? Or, uh... yeah, not in the least bit. No, no. no. I'm not sure who hated me more the first year, uh, Mr. Urich or his wife, because it wasn't just six weeks. It turned into really something that could be a full-time job. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It, it kind of started, we just, we got, I think, 10 kids together, drove them down. 2012. 2012. 2012, we went to North Star and to 10,000 Lakes and toured. Remind you, those kids, so Swanee is one of them, right? Okay, Santa's six yeah. foot seven. Cole Anderson's six foot six. Like, all these kids are towering over Kobe and I. And we get there right before the doors open. So there's just this mass of humanity. You know, they're carrying their little laptops and... You know, they got their little cute little hats on, like cat and hat hats on. Like we're like, holy crap. <laughs> this is something so different. And mind you, like Ryan Swanson uh, played uh, football. He played baseball. Cole Anderson was the captain of the basketball team, uh, ran or did something with track. Again, all these guys are athletes. So we're walking through the parking lot at the U of M and a bus like hops over the curb. And all of a sudden, Cole Anderson's like, dorks! And like the mass of humanity just stops. And they look back at this team that's just towering over them like, crap, they came from the, for us here at the robotics event. <laughs> like we're bullying these kids even though we're not into robotics yet. So that was how we first got introduced to all of this. Um, going down there in 2012, we had a van. Uh, that was when they first, when they took out the driver or the passenger seat. That was the very first time. So, like, I get in and there's no passenger seat, and Cole's like, oh, it's good, guys, let's go drive down. So I'm sitting in the back, and the kid's like, what the hell am I doing with this? This is, yeah. it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Was it really different uh, switching from wrestling to robotics? So, <clears throat> I had the meeting with the robotics parents. I said, here's the deal. You have to find a mentor for next year because I'm doing this to get this going, and then we're going to shift off. And then I went to wrestling parents and said, hey, I'm moonlighting as this robotics thing. Don't worry about it. 
Uh, your kids are going to get my full-time attention. By the end of the year, I put my resignation in for wrestling. Um, yeah, and I have looked back. But what I found is, so I've coached soccer. Yeah. Right? I've coached wrestling. And you can't get weird. Like, th- those those two are different levels of weirdness. What happens in wrestling locker rooms and on wrestling buses is something we can't talk about. Right? Like, there's just... Stri- soccer, it's, it's a different kind of weird. You get some strange kids out there. Uh, but they have their own culture. Robotics, yeah, we've all been in there. It's 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 just uh, it's just goofy. Well, we got Randy. Yeah, here. if you want to say hello, we Randy, something yeah. weird. Uh, this is our friend Randy over here. Hey, Randy. Uh, he was built last year for uh, our Duluth regional. We took third. Uh, he is a space cowboy, except he lost his hat and now he's just a welder. But uh, as you can see, he's dabbing. Uh, he's wearing a Mountain Dew bandolier. You probably can't see it, but he's wearing gold and white boots that were spray painted. Right. See, any, is <laughs> any other sport you'd walk in and you'd see that, and it would draw attention, and people would be worried and wondering what it is. Randy just fits in. But I will say, getting back to that first competition, I would say we weren't there five minutes, and we saw the first robots drive out there and start... Um, the competition and every kid we had with just looked at us and said, we're doing this. We got to do this. We got to do it now. So that was kind of the cool part. I think that was satisfying for us because we weren't sure what people were going to think. So what were some of the problems you had when you first uh, started up the team? Um, one of the first one was we didn't really understand motor controllers. We didn't understand uh, proper wiring. Okay. Again, we were a team that we thought we were going to take like laundry machines apart and take their motors and chuck them on there, and here we go, right? We honestly were, were building up a, a stash of this stuff. We had a student, <clears throat> Ryan Swanson, who decided that he needed to see this lead screw move, right? We didn't Again, we didn't have the proper electrical at that time, so he took around 18 or 20 gauge wire directly from the battery to his SIM motor just to get this thing to move. Now, he's holding one, and Jake Charbonneau is holding the other one. And when that thing starts up, one of our mentors, Mike Anderson, hits me. He's like, wow, watch this. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. That thing held on for like five seconds. And then just this puff of smoke, you hear Charbonneau screaming like a little girl, right? These wires go God knows where. It looked like a, a magic trick just happened in front of us. Both of them have scars or, or burn marks oh on their fingers from it. We're like, oh, we, don't, we weren't a safety team. Then. Safety <laughs> was not our culture yet. Safety was not the um, Okay. But then we looked at the pool noodles that were on, on one of those wires when they when Jake threw it, came right down that pool noodle and slapped it right through. Like it was uh, yep. on the robot slapped right through. Or hot knife through butter. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> that was one of the first things, like, this isn't going right. Well, I think we're pretty optimistic until the the unveil, right? The kickoff. And we're thinking this is gonna be kind of cool. And then we watch this video, and I felt sheer panic. Because I know nothing about robotics. I know I have somebody that knows about it. But I'm thinking, we don't have a chance. How are we going to build something in six weeks? Because that was bag and tag, right? Which is this mysterious, very scary thing when you're a new team. Because you have to hermetically seal this robot and you can't touch it. Right? And I'm thinking, no, we don't have a chance. I don't think our podcast viewers are going to understand what hermetically sealed is because I don't know what it is. That's a Johnny Carson. (laughs) <laughs> reference oh, okay if you don't know who johnny carson is look him up on YouTube. later yeah was... floyd r turbo hermetically sealed yeah that's good stuff <laughs> anyway is it weird having ryan going from a original robotic student to a mentor now the lead strategy mentor isn't it weird ryan yeah i mean he's a weird dude but <laughs> yeah. um you know what it, he never left so it never like it was just we got ryan Right, it, yeah. uh, it, he's definitely brings a lot more positive than negative, but sometimes I scratch my head. I know I've gotten older, like I, I've had an advanced uh, maturity or advanced age man because he is on the team. Oh boy, all sorted out. Do you guys have uh, problems finding money for the robot, or huh. to get into the? Region? Depends on who you asked. Uh, it was pretty easy actually. I just, yeah, he just kept ordering things. So mind you, I'm an administrator at the school. I have a school credit card, and we have. I don't know, a third of what we need in the bank, and things just keep getting ordered. And I'm getting bills, and the district office is asking me how I'm going to pay for this. 
and I'm lying through my teeth saying, don't worry, it's all under control. And that was part of our battles. I'm like, yeah. quit spending money. Well, we need this. So it got to the point where Yurik would no longer ask me to order things. He would send the girls on the team down. And you can't, can't, can't say no. You can't yell at them. <laughs> so they would come in, well, Mr. Kohlinger, I think we really need this uh, sim motor thing-a-ding, whatever, right? And I'd be like, do you even know what it is? Oh, yeah, we really need it. And I know they're lying, but they're so nice. I can't <laughs> yell at them. So what would we do? We would order it, and then I would just give him dirty looks and mumble under my breath. Okay. And uh, <coughs> we started out thinking, okay, we have a project budget the first year of like $10,000. Not realizing we're going to qualify for worlds and everything, and I think by the end of the first year, and this includes student money in for rooming and everything, but I think we burned through like forty-five grand the first oh year. Oh my gosh! So yeah, there yeah. was some just a robotics just, club after yeah. school. For small, a small six robotics weeks. club. Yeah, yeah. Six, six weeks. weeks you we'll know. be done. Yeah. You know, he'll only be in it for a year. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What is this? The seventh, eighth. This is year number eight. We started in okay. 2013. And going back to that year, like, it wasn't just, like, a normal year. 2013 still looked upon as probably the best game. So, it was, for us, it was because we were rookies and we just had a great year. Um, Elk River comes in there, our mentor team, week four, and <laughs> they've got a robot that drives into the room, picks up Frisbees and starts chucking them. We're like, holy cows, that's sweet. And Mark Ryan's like, hey, let's see your robot. And we're like, yeah, um, we got a drive train that we think we're going to build. Yes. Week four. All right. Sound hey, familiar? Hey. Yeah. Hey, we had Sounds a t-shirt like shield. Nobody else had a t-shirt shield. Unique. It was very unique. It was called, we didn't have a shield, and we're at the competition, and we decide, okay, well, well there's a whole other story about getting to the competition, but once the robot actually moved, um, we put a t-shirt on the shield. Did you just like tear it off a kid's back or like? We left him down there. <laughs> you left yeah, him down there? Oh, you man. know how that feels? Yeah. yeah, I know how that feels. I bet you're kind of wondering like how the first competition went, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So we roll in and we have robot inspection, right? Okay. And Yurik's telling me, hey, don't worry about it. We're all good. This We're good. thing's going to move. And we get there, and all of a sudden, here comes the lead robot inspector, and there, there's parts, seriously, flying off this thing, right? We better correct that. It wasn't the lead robot inspector. It was a robot inspector. You're right. It and wasn't. he reached in, because we had bell wire again. We went to True Value to get the wire. Well, you don't have stranded wire, but they got bell wire. That's good enough. We'll use that, right? Uh, stake one. Yeah, they the inspector reached and grabbed the wires out of our robot. You can't use these. And I'm like... And so that, that's I knew something might be off on how we calculated this. Like, my job now might be at risk because I don't know if we can rewire this thing down here because we don't have any real wire. Right? We didn't understand the gist of the whole program. So, yeah. So we had illegal solenoids that we had ordered. We had, I think, eight air tanks on the machine and we oh, really boy. didn't need them. Um, so, yes, we leave that night first night we're the only robot out of 60 I think that was there the first year that wasn't inspected and so on the way home there was some consternation you can look that word up too okay, okay. Let me pull um, it. yeah and we were kind of worried and we get there the next day and we walk in to the pit area and we're not mind the first you we can there. see the pit from the top we're in yes. Mary Uchi, so you come in the bowl and you look down you can see our pit and there's just inspectors all over it yeah tons it, of inspectors i've already been re uh, read the the riot act right so i knew what was expected of me okay. i knew what i'm walking back into school and on monday morning like well, let's clean up my desk and everything else because yeah we were the last team to leave on, on thursday night because we had to rebuild everything everything okay. and when we showed up the next morning like i said there's all these inspectors there thinking they're looking for issues, but finding out later. I blew my top. I blew it. Yeah. This is how you're going to treat rookie teams. How does this program even survive? What kind of bull crap is this? I'm not sure if I used all those exact words, but our lead robot inspector at that time was like, no, 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 no. We're here to make sure you guys get on the field. I'm like, at this point, I don't care. Like, you've ruined this experience for me and my kids. I'm done. I'm not coming back to this. This is bull honky. Blah. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. And here, <laughs> our newspaper, the Becker Citizen, sends down uh, Dave, right? Hanula. Yep. Dave Hanula, and he's sitting in the background. He's a tall guy, too. Everybody's tall on this team. I don't know why. And he's just sitting there. He's the type of guy that if he can get an angle, he's going to take it and exploit it. So he, he had every player, like, the Becker team is just goes down in flames. <laughs> he's the type of guy that'll take a picture. He'll take ten of them of you. He'll catch the one that looks like this, because that's what he wants. And he'll to use that. He'll use that one. Oh yeah, right. He's just he never gets the best side. So I can just see him back there, and uh, like my blood's boiling. I know Mark or Mr. Kovinger is going to fire me. This is it. So I I, I went after him. I, I went after the inspectors. I yep. And then he storms you know, off. Now I'm at the point where I'm like, well, now i got to be the nice guy. So I'm trying to make good with everything. And we get pretty much everybody to agree finally that it's okay except one guy. Right? Yeah. One guy is being a little stubborn. He's been a little obstinate. And don't look that one up. And don't look that up. So now the roles reverse. Mr. Yurik now is calm. And I basically, at this point, I lose it. So okay. it's like, I want to speak to the manager, right? <laughs> and they're like, well, there isn't a manager. I want to speak to whoever's in charge. We'll talk to this guy. So I go over and I threaten him that he's going to be done, right? He's not going to have a job anymore. And the guy's like, well, I'm just a volunteer. I want to talk to your boss. So I finally get to talk to someone who's kind of like in charge. And I have nothing to stand on, right? I have no credibility. So I pull out the... I'm an assistant principal. And the guy's like, okay. And I'm like, I know people. I'm going to shut this whole thing down the way we've been treated. So now he's back in the pit finding out everything's fine. And we're pushing the one guy that's being a little obstinate to the side. And I'm in the back room and I'm threatening to basically fire everybody. Volunteers, it doesn't matter who it is. So I come on there, <coughs> sweaty, hot, and I'm like, don't worry. I just took care of this. I just threatened them all. And you're just like, no, we're all flying. We 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 got the sticker saying we can compete. And I'm like, oh no. Oh. What was that thing they talked about? Gracious professionalism? Yeah. yeah. Was that even around back then? Well, it was there, but yeah, it was I'm not sure I was very gracious okay. or professional. But they all took it in stride, okay. And hey, we got on the we got on the field and the robot drove around. That's all I care about. Yeah. Now it's a success. Our robot moved. Thank you very much. We're geniuses and we're done. Time to pack up the stuff. Get yeah. Out yep. You know, we did our thing. We're going to drive around. It's the end of six weeks. We'll go home. We'll tell everybody it was a success and hey, we'll move on. Oh my gosh. Remind me, didn't we end up winning Rookie All Star? Or was that. <laughs> so was... we. The team's different now, right? Yeah. We, we, we attack the game. We attack each season very differently from that first year. We just. We were out playing in a sandbox, putting stuff together, and um, yeah, we ended up winning the Rookie All-Star. Uh, a huge part of that is due to the group of girls that we had as sophomores. We called them the Propagandanistas, because we really just wanted them to go and just flood the market. No, it's not a real word. You can look it up. It's something we okay. just created. Um, they came up with the block shot counter on the spot, like when we were there. Because again... Our, our robot will not climb anymore after we had to bolt everything down, our 22 and a half inch plate that was used as our ballast. We were dead in the water, so we had to come up with something creative. So the kids go, hey, we still have the, the 14, the 10, and the 12 inch uh, pneumatic um, actuators. We'll use those and we'll stack two together and we'll just go around and we'll block shots. So these girls took it upon themselves to find cardboard and different colored duct tape and then created the shot block counters, sandwich boards, and they started walking around. And they trained the crowd, not just our crowd, but like all of us, all the people around us. Anytime that Becker you know, blocks a shot, we get up and go crazy. And we did. It was obnoxious. Right? So that's kind of where we kind of first started our niche with marketing being one of our, our strong points on the team and taking pride in the fact that we're going to have those obnoxious fans. Remember last year? Right. Yeah, it was. It was the good. obnoxious fans. Uh, I honestly believe that that was a big reason why um, we got picked and the rookie all star part of it. You know, the, the whole persevering through that. Because I literally was, take, I was picking those kids up on Friday. We were going home if we were having any more problems. I was done. Um, this robot would roll around. <laughs> Sometimes it hit a piece of carpet that was rolled up just wrong, or the robot didn't like it, and it would shut off. <laughs> Reboot the whole thing 30 seconds. It doesn't even. 
Yeah. But it was it was so satisfying to see these carbon fiber, these things that I would call them mentor built robots, mm-hmm. right? And they're they're going around chucking these frisbees, and here would come Peanut over there. Here'd come the T-shirt, and we blocked the frisbee, and it was great. The other drive teams would freak out, and we're just like so happy it's even out there. And like Mr. Eric said, pretty soon people are cheering, and we truly became the underdog story, right? Our kids, we get into final selections, and we're getting picked. We have kids on the cell phone calling their parents saying, you have to get down here now. You're not going to believe what's going on. We had parents thinking robotics was like we would build a, build a little robot, and it was like a 4-H project, yeah. and we would just display them. And they came down, and it, it was pandemonium that day. We hugged. Yeah, there was a hug that happened. It was one of the first awkward hugs I've had that has now happened along different levels of competition here. But yeah, we had looked at each other. We're like, are we going to do this? Like, we had to have that agreement, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, this yeah. is the time we can actually hug. And no, it was no back and forth. It was like, hey, man, we got to do this. Like, yeah. yeah we hug. So we joke about it now, but there was honestly, there was parents that were crying, seeing their kids who had maybe never been in a competition, never really been in the limelight out there in the finals and it, it was that part was pretty amazing so i'm here just kind of similar to like worlds last year i feel like everyone's going crazy because we actually won eins or yeah, i hugged a lot of people cars. last yeah, year that was <laughs> i'm not gonna lie that was that was pretty good what, what i had people better? that weren't even on our team <laughs> just, hey, just ran right right out there hugging people in a wild right parking lot <laughs> Yeah. Wait, was Roger last year, or was that? Roger was uh, in 2017. So, yeah, we do have a few stories revolving around me hugging people. Maybe I do hug more people than I should. Um, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't initiate the, the Roger one. He looked at me. Again, Roger's, what, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, mountain of a man. He's like, I'm going to hug you. And I'm like, ah. Um, <laughs> it was after 2017, we built one of the worst robots that we've ever built. And we're good at building really bad robots, right? Like, we know this. Uh, 15 was a debacle, 17 was a debacle. Um, after Worlds, uh, we tore down, at, at Worlds actually, we tore down our robot down to the nuts and bolts, put it back in the bag so we had to bag it up to go to state. And I just remember John Stratus coming and said, holy crap, you need to get down here now. Your, your team completely tore apart the robot. I'm like, yeah, it did. Uh, we rebuilt the robot just to run gears at state, mm-hmm. right? And it didn't go well for us. Again, we're there. It's great to compete. Um, and I'm sitting there at the pit just like, what did I do wrong? What's going wrong with our program? Why are we not advancing beyond where we're at? Like, we're just not getting the, the level of robots we need to actually be a factor in these things. Um, so I just, you know, thinking a lot, I'm like, you know what? We need to get these mentors. And Mark talked about mentor-built robots, mentor-built teams. Uh, we are that now. Because of what happened in 15 and 17, um, with 17, again, right, state, and I just said, I, I need the mentors involved in every step. I need them to help with the decisions, the design. We can't just let these kids go and make stuff and then have the mentors sit on the sidelines. So yeah, I thought a lot of my coaches just got to get the mentors involved more and they got to be a part of this. And Roger looked at me and I didn't realize he was there. He was just, you know, just a big giant wall. Found out it was Roger. He's like, I'm gonna hug you now. <laughs> and he hugged me. Um, yeah. So, and then that's where the, the kind of that mentor built mentality came. And we, we coach with the kids, building the team up through the mentors. The, the mentors come back year to year. Sadly, the way the program's built, you guys time out, you graduate, you go away, which is awesome. Some of you don't go away. Um, and that's sometimes it's not awesome. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's where the whole hashtag mentor built for 4607 um, kind of came about. And then we saw it at Worlds last year with the little stickers. And we're like, yeah, like we're, we're proud of the fact that our mentors uh, definitely help out big time in this. Uh, they're right there learning with the kids. So, so what do you think the main thing uh, CIS 4607 did to take the jump to being an elite team? God. I don't think we're an elite team. <laughs> we're getting it. there. I mean, going from 2017, which okay. went very badly, to now, what, what's changed? The biggest thing that has changed is the the amount of mentors that we have now to the student. The, the student to mentor ratio is, is closed. It's back to where we were in 13. We had a ton of mentors in 13. We had a lot more kids in, in 14, about the same amount of mentors. 
Um, but yeah, the, the biggest thing is, is we've gone through this now seven years, just like we iterate on a robot. Um, mentors have to go through the iterative process as well. Um, we've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you go back and look at our robots, they're not great. Um, we've had some pretty bad robots, but we've had some incredible teams. Uh, the biggest thing for us is the breakdown of the game. We seem to be hitting that faster and faster every year. We always seem to find a niche role for our robots. Um, even when we build bad robots, like we always laugh about 2015, we had the best defensive robot in the world. We defended our own alliances because we couldn't move for eight out of 10 matches. We're the largest robot out there. So, um, last year- Something you said too about that culture of embracing failure, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, so we are, we are much better than we used to be but I remember the first meeting we had with parents, one of the things we told them was, we expect your children to fail, and we expect you to support your children when they fail. And we wouldn't stop the failures. We would let them fail and then figure out why did you fail, right? Instead of stopping it before it happens, because when do you learn those best lessons? So I think that's something that's pretty important to our culture. Another thing, we have a lot of weird inside jokes on the team. Yeah, everybody uh, does. Poor. Everyone does, but you know, I feel like I feel like we stand out with our. <coughs> what 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 are some of the funniest things that have happened earlier in uh in the robotics team's life? Uh, boat gas is still gas something that's stuck around. around, and that one you got it. Logan has to tell that story. I can't, but it's you know you got regular gas, you know your eighty sevens, your eighty nines, you got premium. And then, for some reason, there's a kid that boat gas. You got to get boat gas in your boat, and then you go fishing. You get boat gas, and that's kind of where boat gas for forty six oh seven uh, came about. The blue nitrile also happened with Logan. Uh, that has been all over our team. Um, in twenty fourteen, we had two programmers that came in. Both of them were freshmen, and we we're getting ready for MRI, and. Um, one of the, the kids decided that he was going to jump into the programming side and just, no, we don't need that. Oh, they started trashing and, and throwing away all of our, our code, like just deleted it. And I walk up, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, we're going we're gonna to make better code. And I'm like, you just got rid of our code? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so we had to stay here that night. Luckily, Brent Schlang had, had the code still on his computer because he was a programmer the year before. And... Um, during that process, though, of, of getting it, uh, Dropbox was just a brand new thing. Okay. Right? So, Brenton's, hey, hey you got to sign for Dropbox. We're like, where, where do we get a Dropbox? So, he's like, it's online. <laughs> you got to go and sign for Dropbox. I'll send it to you. Okay. So, we got that done. Well, during that time, uh, we were sitting there as Ryan Swanson. Ryan's always around, right? Ryan Swanson, uh, Logan, Stefan, and myself. And I looked at Logan, and I'm like, you guys want to go sniff some blue nitro? <laughs> I don't know why, but we were just sitting there waiting for this drop box to open up. So we're in the back room, and it, it, it stuff smells like confectionery. It's like, so it's, yeah. How did you figure out it smelled like vanilla? I just, I'm curious. How, did you just, like, pick it up and just, like, oh, this looks like it would smell good? I and smell then... a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things? What, give some examples. What are, you, what are you talking about? You know how... Um, Ray's brother had that problem with his chin before he had to touch his chin before he eats, right? Everybody loves Raymond. Yeah, yeah. Do you really know that? No, no, okay. no. no. Well, That's too old. For so, me, for me, like I smell things when the back package comes open up, and you look at the team, like they do the same thing. Yeah, what does this smell like? When these come out, you know, when these things here come out of the package, <laughs> holy crap, they smell like they're one of the most noxious things. But as they as it off gases and everything, they're not so bad anymore. But yeah, this sounded like paint thinner the first time I opened up one of those. I was like, holy crap. Uh, don't try the brown nitrile. The brown nitrile smells like horse. It's terrible. But yeah, blue nitrile, it just became something that, again, we've got ties of it. We've got bandoliers. The kids leave it in their, in their wallets. Uh, blue nitrile has been a thing on, on 4607 in terms of, we don't use it for anything, mind you. Well, I mean our wheels, but. Okay, one year we use it on wheels. Every other year it's been, we keep it in our wallets and when we're nervous or we're having a panic attack, we pull it out and we sniff blue nitrile. Um, I'm See, pretty this sure. proves something I've said for years since we started. We're the only team coached by an SNL character. Okay, uh, Saturday yeah, Night yeah, Live. Yep. There's yep. an old skit you're probably too young to remember, but it's the family that they had to smell everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that was the whole skit. They would sit down for supper, and the dad would take out the gallon of milk, and he'd pour it, and it would be curdled, and he'd be like, "Oh, 
this smells horrible. Here, smell it. And what, okay? So then the, the dad would sit down and he got poked in the arse by a big nail sticking out of the, the chair. So what do you think he did? Oh, oh, big nail just poked me in the butt. Here, come over here. So no. what does everybody in the family do? They go sit down in the same chair. Oh, oh, you're right. Right? Yeah. That's this guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, we got to move on. We got we to gotta end this off. You guys got anything you want to say to end this off? No. No, you, you got anything to say? I'm not that creative. Yeah, you know, you know this, it just all went according to plan. I saw yeah. this coming. You saw this coming? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank no. you for watching the first episode of CIS Speaks, sponsored by uh, LPI, Liberty Paper, Inc. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode, hopefully next Wednesday.